Hello, welcome. My name is Vic, and today we're going to be working on a really exciting machine learning project. We're going to be predicting who's going to win each football match in the English Premier League. We're going to start out with match data that we're going to load into pandas and clean. Then we're going to apply a machine learning model called a random forest to actually predict who will win each match. Then we'll measure how well our algorithm did and actually improve the performance. And we'll end with some next steps that you can use to continue improving the model. All right, let's get started. And by the end of this project, we'll have trained a machine learning model that can predict whether a team will win a given match in the English Premier League or not. And we can apply that to future matches. All right, let's go ahead and start coding. So we will be using JupyterLab for this project. If you're not familiar with JupyterLab or you don't have it installed, feel free to use Google Colab, which is a cloud no hosted notebook. All right, and we'll be working with a file called matches.csv. If you did the web scraping part of this project earlier, you should have that file locally. If you didn't, don't worry, you can download the file and the link is going to be in the description. So let's take a quick look at the file. And what the file has is a, more than a thousand rows. And each row is a single match that was played in the English Premier League. So you can see there's a lot of data about each match, including which team won or lost and some stats about shooting and possession, etc. All right, so let's go ahead and start coding. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import a library called pandas. Then we're gonna read in our match data. And that's just matches.csv. And we're gonna specify that the first column in our data is actually the index column. When you looked at the CSV file, you might've noticed that there were just a bunch of numbers in the first column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's referred to as an index in pandas. So we'll just specify to pandas that that is the index column. Now we can take a look at the first few rows of our data. And we can see it looks the same as the CSV file that we just looked at. So each row is a single match in the English Premier League. And then let's take a look at the shape property of matches. And we can see we have 1,389 rows and 27 columns. All right, so if you know something about the EPL, you may know that there are 38 matches played each season, and there are 20 teams in the league each season. And we have data for two seasons, the 2020 to 21 season and the 21 to 22 season. So if we multiply that all out, we should have 1,520 matches, but we actually have fewer. So let's do a little investigation and figure out what is going on here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at value counts of our teams. So what this does, will it will help us figure out how many matches we have for each team in our data. So let's go ahead and run this, and we'll see each squad in the English Premier League and how many matches we have for that squad. So we can see most squads are kind of in the 70s. We have a few that have match counts in the 30s. So if you know something about the EPL, you know three teams are relegated each year. They're demoted to the lower league and three teams are pulled up from the lower league into the EPL. So we would expect six teams to have fewer than 70 matches in our data set. But we actually have seven teams that have fewer than 70 matches. And if you know about the EPL, you know that Liverpool was not relegated last season. So let's, let's take a look at just our matches from Liverpool and see what's happening. So let's go ahead and run that. What this is doing is it's just selecting our rows where the team is Liverpool. And what we see here is we only have data from the 2020 to 2021 season for Liverpool. We're missing data for the next season, the current season. And that's okay, it's, it's not a big problem, but at least now we know where some of these missing rows went. 
We're missing one season for Liverpool. All right, now let's take a look at the match data. So this round column tells you which match week each match was played. So we'll scroll up and take a look at that column. You can see it tells you is this match week one, two, three, etc. So let's go ahead and run this. And then we can see how many rows or how many matches we have for each match week. And we should have 39 because we're missing Liverpool. So it would give us one fewer match for each match week. And you can see many of these match weeks have fewer than 39. And the reason for this is we scraped our data for 2021 to 22 while the season was still ongoing. So we actually have fewer than 39 matches for some of these match weeks, which is okay. We can still work with this data, but that explains where our missing rows went. All right, so now let's go ahead and actually take a look at our data and do a little bit of cleanup before we apply any machine learning. So the first thing we'll do is look at D types. So D types is the type of data that is in each column. So machine learning algorithms can only work with numeric data. So data that is in float 64 or int 64. Machine learning algorithms can't work with data that is an object. So what we need to do is actually figure out how to create columns that we can use as predictors that are numeric. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll convert our date column into a date time data type in pandas. Right now it's stored as a string, but if we convert it to a date time, we can actually pull out a lot of properties from that, like day of week, hour, day, et cetera, year, month, and use those properties in our machine learning algorithm. So what we'll do is we'll create a new column called date. And what we'll do is assign to this column the value of pandas dot to date time matches date. So it's actually not creating a new column. What it's doing is it's converting the existing column to a date time and then overwriting the existing column with the date time. So let's take a look at matches. And we can see we now can't really see a difference when the date column is rendered. But if we take a look at D types, we can see that date is now a date time. And this just makes it easier for us to compute predictors based on the date time column. All right, now let's create a few basic predictors that we can use to create just a basic straightforward machine learning model. It won't be a very complicated model, but this will give us a base that we can build off of and add more complexity to. So the first predictor that we'll create is called venue code. So what this is, is it's just converting this home or away column into a numeric column. So venue indicates whether the team played an away game or a home game. And this is actually a really important predictor uh, for the outcomes of matches, uh, if you've ever heard of home field advantage. So what we're gonna do is convert this to numbers so the algorithm can actually use it. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna write matches venue code equals matches venue dot as type category. So this will convert it to a categorical data type in pandas because there's only two unique values in the column. And then we'll convert it into integers using .cat.codes. So basically what this is doing is converting it from a string into categories and then converting those categories into numbers. Okay, so let's take a look at matches now. And we can see we now have a venue code at the right and this venue code is a zero when the team was away and a one when the team was at home. Okay, our next thing we'll do is something similar to what we just did. We'll create a unique code for each opponent squad. So what we'll say is matches opponent dot as type category dot cat dot codes. And this will do the same thing we just did with the venue column, except with the opponent column. So let's take a look at matches now. And we can see there's now an opcode column. So each opponent now has their own code. So Tottenham is 
18, and you can see it's 18 down here also. Arsenal is zero, Norwich City is 15, and so on. The next column we'll look at is the hour column. So maybe certain teams play better at certain times of day. So what we'll do is we'll look at matches time dot str dot replace. And then let me pause here and explain what we're gonna replace and why. So let's look at the time column. So let's type out matches. You can see the time column here and it's the hour colon the minute. So 1630 would be 430 PM. What we basically want to do is remove the colon and the minutes and just keep the hour. So we're going to do that with a string replacement. So basically we're going to write a regular expression and this regular expression is basically going to replace the colon and the minutes with nothing. And we'll write regex equals true. So that's what this replace method is doing. And then what we'll do is as type int. So once we remove this, we'll convert the hour to an integer. Because if you'll remember, we need to be able to use a number as input to a machine learning algorithm. Okay, let's look at matches now. And we can see the, there is now an hour column at the very end. All right, so there's one more column we're going to create before we build our initial model. So this column is going to be called day code. So what this will give us is a number for each day of the week. So Monday is a zero, Tuesday is one, Wednesday is three, uh, sorry, two, and so on. So what we'll do here is we will call dot dt dot day of week on our date column. And what this does is it gets the day of week property of that call. So let's take a look at matches again. And you can see there's now a day code. So Sunday is coded as a six, Saturday is coded as a five, and so on. So there might be some useful information in there for the algorithm. Okay, now what we can do is start to train our initial machine learning model. And before we do that, we need to actually set up a target that we're gonna try to predict. So our target is actually going to be whether the team won or not. So what we'll say here, is matches target equals matches results equals equals W. So if we look at the result column, I'm gonna scroll up, of our matches data frame, you can see that the result can be L, W, or D. So we're gonna convert this to two numbers. So if the result is a loss or a draw, we'll code it as a zero. If the result is a win, we'll code it as a one. Because what we wanna predict is if the team won or not. What you could do if you, if you wanted to make this more complex is code it as zero, one, or two if you wanna predict losses and draws separately. We're gonna combine them uh, just to keep this a little bit simpler. All right, so what this will do is it'll return a Boolean, so a true or false. So if result is W, it'll be true, if it's false, if, it's, if it doesn't equal W, it'll be false. So we're just gonna convert this to a number using as type int. So this will turn true into a one and false into a zero. So if we look at matches again, we can see we now have a target column at the right and this is a zero when the team lost or drew and a one when the team won. All right, we are now ready to train our machine learning model. And we are gonna go ahead and import a model from scikit-learn. And what we're importing is a random forest classifier. So a random forest is a type of machine learning model that can pick up non-linearities in the data. So for example, our op code, our opponent code, doesn't necessarily have a linear relationship. Right? So an, an opponent code of 18 doesn't imply that the opponent is more difficult than if the opponent code is only 15. They're just values for different opponents. So a random forest can pick that up, whereas a linear model can't. So we're gonna initialize a random forest classifier, and then we'll go ahead and actually initialize the class. 
And what we do is we just call the random forest classifier class and we'll pass in some parameters. So n estimators is the number of individual decision trees we wanna train. So a random forest is a series of decision trees, but each decision tree has slightly different parameters. If you don't know about decision trees or random forests, don't worry too much about it. The higher this number is, the longer the algorithm will take to run, but potentially the more accurate it will be. Okay, then we'll specify min samples split. So this is basically the number of samples we wanna have in a leaf of the decision tree before we actually split the node. And basically the higher this is, the less likely we are to overfit, but the lower our accuracy on the training data will be. So you might wanna experiment a little bit with this value to find the, the optimal one. I'm just gonna set it to 10. And then we wanna set random state. So a random forest has a lot of random parameters in it. So if we set a random state, it means that if we run the random forest multiple times, we'll get the same results as long as the data is the same. Okay, now we're gonna split up our training and test data. This data is time series data. So we need to be really careful when we split it to, to ensure that the test set, all of the data in the test set comes after all of the data in the training set. Because in the real world, you can't train an algorithm on data in the future and use it to predict data in the past. It has to be the other way around. You can only predict the future using the past. So we'll basically take anything that came before 2022, so all of the matches before 2022, and put those in our training set. And then our test set will be anything in 2022. And that's what this code is doing. It's just subsetting our match data frame. Then we'll create our predictors. So this is just gonna be a list of the predictor columns that we created. So venue code, op code, hour and day of day code. Okay, so those are our predictors. Now what we can do is we can actually fit our random forest model. So we'll fit it using train predictors and we'll try to predict our target. So the dot fit method is basically going to train a random forest model with these predictors trying to predict this target. And the target is zero if the team lost or drew and a one if the team won. So let's run this. Now we can generate predictions using the predict method and we'll pass in our test data and predictors here. All right, so next we need to actually figure out how we determine the accuracy of the model. And this is actually a really important choice. So we're gonna try a couple of different metrics and see which one makes more sense. So what we'll do is we'll import from scikit-learn.metrics, we'll import the accuracy score. So accuracy score is a metric that will basically say, if you predicted a win, what percentage of the time did the team actually win? If you predicted a loss, what percentage of the time did the team actually lose? And it'll combine that. So basically looking at what percentage of the time was your prediction accurate? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say accuracy equals accuracy score test target. And then let's take a look at the accuracy. Oh, right, and then predictions, I needed to pass those in. So we pass in our actuals and then our predictions, and then we can take a look at our accuracy. So we can see our accuracy looks pretty good. So when we predicted something would happen, 61% of the time that thing happened. Let's dig a little bit deeper into this though and see in which situations our accuracy was high versus low. And in order to do that, we first need to create a data frame. And this data frame will combine our actual values and our predicted values. Okay, so our actual is just the, the target and our prediction is the predictions. Okay, let's run that. And then what we can do is actually create a cross tab using pandas. So this is just a two-way table 
that will show us when we predicted a zero or a one, what actually happened. So what we'll do is call index, pass in the index parameter, which will be the rows of this cross tab, which will just be the actual, and then our columns will be our predictions. Prediction, gotta change that. Okay, all right, so you can see our columns are our predictions. So when we predicted a loss or a draw, you can see that most of the time we were correct. 141 times we were correct, only 76 times we were wrong, where the actual was a win. But when we predicted a win, we were actually wrong more often than we were right. So since what we care about with this model is predicting wins, we need to go back and revise our accuracy metric a little bit. So we're actually gonna use a slightly different metric we're actually gonna use something called the precision score. And what this is gonna tell us is when we predicted a win, what percentage of the time did the team actually win? So what we'll do is we'll again pass in the actual value, so test target, and then we'll pass in our predictions. All right, and you can see here that our precision was only 47%. So when we predicted a win, the team only actually won 47% of the time, which is not great accuracy, uh, precision. So we can improve this model quite a bit, and we will do that in the next step. Before I do that, I wanna explain quickly why we split up into the train and test set. The reason we do this is if you evaluate an algorithm, if you see the error and uh, how well it performed on the same data set that you trained it on, your algorithm is gonna look awesome. This is kind of like having an open book test, right? You read the book and it feels like you know everything. But then when you go to do something outside of the test, maybe you don't actually know it so well because you were just reading the book, right? All of the answers were in the book for the test. So we want the algorithm to actually do well predicting future matches, which is why we test it out on data that it hasn't been trained on, because that enables us to see, does this algorithm do well in making predictions on new data, which is what we care about. All right. So next, we're going to create some more predictors to improve the accuracy of our model. And to do this, we're gonna need to split our matches data frame up by team, because what we wanna do is compute rolling averages for team performance. How did this team do in the past few games? How many shots did they have? How many goals were scored against them, et cetera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called grouped matches, which is just going to be matches.group by team. So what this will do is it'll basically create one data frame for every squad in our data. And what we can do is we can actually look at a single group. So what we can do is group equals grouped matches dot get group Manchester City. So what this will do is give us a single group from the data. And this is just Manchester City. So these are all of the matches that Manchester City played in. All right, so what we want to do is compute rolling averages. So what we want to say is, if we're at match week four, how did Man City do in the previous three match weeks? And then we can pass that into the algorithm, and the algorithm can use that information to make better predictions about how they'll do in match week four. For example, if they lost all three of their games before match week four, it, you might expect them to also lose match week four because they, they haven't been playing very well. So we're going to create a function called rolling averages. And what this will do is take a group in. It'll take a set of columns that we want to compute rolling averages for, and then it'll take in a set of new columns that we want to assign the rolling averages to. So the first thing we'll do is we'll sort our group by date, because we want it to be sorted in ascending order of date because we wanna look at the last three matches a team played and what their performance was like. Then we're gonna create a variable called rolling stats. 
And all we're gonna do is take a set of columns, which will be in this list calls that we pass in, and compute the rolling averages for those columns. And then this parameter is very important, closed equals left. So why is this important? If you don't pass this in, what pandas will do is compute the rolling averages for these three weeks and then assign that average to week three. The problem with that is it uses knowledge of the future. Let's say we're trying to predict what happens in week three. This rolling average method will actually include some of that into our week three data because it'll take the rolling average of these three weeks and assign it to week three. What we instead want to have happen is if we're in week four, we only want the rolling averages for the previous three weeks. We don't want the week four data to be included in that. So that's what this closed equals left does. It basically says, take the current week out and, and, and ignore it when you're creating these rolling averages. And then we'll just take the mean. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign these rolling stats back to our original data frame, but with new names. And uh, I'll show you what calls and new calls will be in just a second. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to drop any missing values. And let's talk about why we need to do that. So let's say it's week two and you're trying to compute what happened in the previous three weeks. You can't because there aren't three previous weeks of data to work with. So what pandas will do here is it'll just put missing values in for all of, all of those columns that we're computing rolling averages for. So what this drop NA does is it removes all of the rows that have those missing values because you can't pass, uh, well, many machine learning algorithms you can't pass missing values into. Some can deal with missing values, but uh, most can't. And then we'll just return group. All right, so let's define our columns list. So these are the columns that we wanna compute rolling averages for. So we'll do goals for, goals against, shots, shots taken, shots on target, distance, so the total distance uh, each shot traveled, free kicks, penalty kicks, and penalty kick attempts. And then we will create a new columns list, which is just going to be a format string, and we're basically going to just add rolling on to the end of the column names. So let's take a look at what's happening here. All right, so you can see columns are the names of the original columns and new columns are the new columns we wanna create with the rolling averages in them. And you can see we just added underscore rolling to each column name. Okay, now we can call rolling averages for a single group and our group is Man City. So this is just for the Man City games. Rolling averages and pluralization always gets me. Okay, so you can see we've now added in all of these extra columns that have information about what happened in the previous three matches. So this is something we can pass into our machine learning algorithm and it will improve accuracy. So what we can do now is apply this to all of our matches. So what we'll say is matches rolling equals matches.group by team. This is what we did before. Except instead of calling get group, we're gonna call apply. And what this will do is apply one function to each, to each team essentially. And that function is gonna be this rolling averages function. And we'll pass in our columns and our new columns. So let's take a look at what this did and I'll break it down step by step. So we took our original matches data frame, we grouped it by team, which as I mentioned before, creates one data frame for each team in our data. And then we applied a function to each of those team data frames to compute the rolling averages. So you can see, we now have rolling averages for every match, which is exactly what we need. We do, if you've noticed, have this on the left though, we have each team name as a separate level to our pandas index. We actually don't need that. So we'll go ahead and drop that extra index level. It just makes it a little bit harder to work with the data frame. So we'll call drop level team 
which will drop that extra index level. So let's take a look at matches rolling and see what happened. And you can see we now have just a normal index on the left side. And if you're not familiar with pandas indices, indices are how you call a specific row in pandas. So each, each row has, a, has an index that you use to call that row. If you have a multi-level index like here, you have to use two values to access each row, which sometimes you need, but in this case we didn't, so we just dropped these extra index levels. You might notice one other thing about our index. We have 1,317 rows, but our index doesn't go that high, which means that a lot of values in our index are being re repeated. But we actually want unique values in our index. So what we're gonna do is just call matches rolling dot index equals range matches rolling dot shape zero. And what this will do is just assign values from zero to 1,316 to be our new in indices. And you can see we now have new indices. This is important just because we want unique values for each index. And this gives us that. Okay, so now we have some new predictors and we can make a new set of predictions using these predictors. So we're gonna create a function called make predictions. This will just make it easy for us to, um, to basically continue to iterate on our algorithm because we don't have to keep repeating the train, test, et cetera, code. So I'm gonna copy and paste some code we already wrote. So the first thing we'll do is we'll split our data into a training set and a test set, same thing we did before. Then we'll fit our random forest model. We did this before. Then we will create our predictions. Then we'll combine our predictions and our actuals together. Then we'll calculate our, our precision. And then finally, we'll return our precision value. So we already did all of this. We just put it into a single function. So it's just a little bit easier to use. And then what we could do is just call this function. And what we'll do is we'll pass in our predictors. So this is the original set of four columns that we used. And then we'll add in our new predictors as well, which is in new calls. Okay, so let's take a look at precision now. And we can see we've improved our precision quite a bit. So we went from 47% to 62%, which is amazing. And we can take a look at combined if we wanted to dig in a little bit more and see where our mispredictions were. But combined doesn't tell us about which team actually played in each match. So we can't see if we're mispredicting any specific team. We can fix this by actually adding in some of that information to combine. So what we can do is call combine.merge, and what we'll do is we'll match, merge in some columns from matches rolling. So we'll merge in the date, the team, the opponent, and the result. And then what we'll do is we'll merge based on the index. And that's what left index equals true, right index equals true, so basically what, what pandas will do here is it'll look in our combined data frame. It'll say, okay, the index for this row is 55. It'll find the corresponding index in matches rolling and it'll merge the row um, based on that. So let's take a look at combine now. And we can see we've now added in information about uh, what, what the actual match was. The team that played their opponent and the result win, loss, or draw. All right. Okay, and the final thing we'll do is we will actually look at how our algorithm did at predicting both sides of a match. So in our data, we have data for both teams, the, the team that was at home and the team that was away for each match. And our algorithm might actually have made different predictions on each side of that, right? We could have potentially predicted that the t one, t one team would win and the other team would also win. So what we can do is combine our data together. So we can see, for example, in this row, 
we can see the prediction for Arsenal. We can also see the prediction for Burnley. So let's let's combine those two. And that'll let us actually dig a little bit deeper and resolve any issues. The first thing we need to do here is the team name and the opponent name are not exactly the same. So you see the team name here is Wolverhampton Wanderers, but it's listed in the opponent column as Wolves. So what we need to do is just normalize these. So the names are actually the same and consistent across both columns. To do that, we're gonna create a dictionary and then use the pandas map function with that dictionary. We're here, what we're doing is we are creating a class that inherits from the dictionary class. The reason we need to do this is by default, the pandas map method will essentially not handle any missing keys. So if you create a mapping dictionary that's missing a team name, it'll just remove that team name. But what we want to do instead is if, is if a team name is missing in that dictionary, we want to just replace it with the original name that was passed in. And if that was confusing, you will see in a second what I'm talking about. So what I'll do is I'll type out some mapping values. So if the team name is Brighton and Hove Albion, we want it to just be turned into Brighton. If the team name is Manchester United, we want that to turn into just Manchester UTD. Got to get my quotes in the right place. If the team is Newcastle United, we want that to turn into Newcastle UTD. All right, and then if we want to turn Tottenham Hotspur into just Tottenham. And then West Ham United is going to turn into West Ham. And then finally, the Wolverhampton Wanderers are going to turn into Wolves. All right, so these are the names that are inconsistent between the two. But you can see some of the names are, are consistent. So Arsenal is the same in the team column and the opponent column. And we don't want to have to write all of those out into our map values. So that's what creating this, this missing dictionary does. Uh, if somebody calls this dictionary and passes in Arsenal, it'll just return Arsenal without us having to, to create a mapping value for that. All right, so what we'll do is we'll say mapping equals missing dict map values. So this creates an instance of missing dict, and you can see if we type in mapping arsenal, we'll get arsenal back. But if we type in mapping West Ham United, we'll get West Ham back. And what we can do now is use this in the pandas map method. So what we'll do is we'll pass in mapping. So if we hadn't, if we just used a regular dictionary, so if we passed in map values here, it would have just returned missing values for arsenal, etc., because they don't exist in this dictionary. So let's pass in mapping. Okay, so we now have a new team field in, in our combined dictionary, which is the same team name as in the opponent field. So we can actually use these to merge the data frame with itself. So what we'll say is merged equals combined dot merge. Combined. Left on equals date and new team. And then right on equals date and opponent. So what this is doing is it's merging the data frame with itself because some of these rows are the team is list. So there is a row here that says team arsenal opponent Burnley. 
on 123, there's also a row that says the reverse, team Burnley, opponent Arsenal. So we want to see if the predictions match up on both sides. And that's what this is doing. It's basically saying, look for the new team field and then merge that with the opponent field on the other side. Okay, so let's take a look at merged. Okay, so you can see this is from, this is the kind of original team. So Arsenal played Burnley. And then this is the other side of it. So Burnley played Arsenal. And we can see both teams were predicted to, to draw. So the prediction was a zero and they actually did both draw. So that was a good prediction. Here we can see that Arsenal, here we can see they were again predicted to draw, Arsenal and the Wolves, but uh, Arsenal actually won this one. So we can see where our predictions line up and where they don't. There's, I think there's a couple of these where both teams are predicted to win, so those are always interesting. But what we can do now is we can look at just the rows and we can say, We can look at all of the rows where one team was predicted to win and the other team was predicted to lose because those indicate the rows that the algorithm has more confidence in. So we'll say predicted X equals one, which means team one was predicted to win. And then we'll say predicted Y equals zero because the other team was predicted to lose. And then we'll look at the actual X. So what actually happened here dot value counts. So basically what this is doing is it's saying when the model predicted that team A would win and team B would lose, what actually happened? Okay, so we can see in this case we were actually pretty accurate. So let's see, 27 divided by 40. Our accuracy is about 67%. So this is another iteration we can make to our model that actually improved our accuracy. And we didn't have to do any machine learning. We just had to think about the problem and think about how we could actually merge our data together to get both sides of the match, not just one side. All right, we did quite a lot in this walkthrough. So we started out with some data on Premier League matches. Then we moved on to cleaning the data and getting it ready for machine learning. Then we, we created an initial machine learning model with just a few predictors and a target. We trained a random forest model to actually operate on that set of predictors. And we computed a, a precision score. Then we improved our accuracy by generating more predictors and training the model again using these rolling averages. We improved our precision and then we improved our precision again by looking at both sides of a match, both how team A was predicted to do and how team B was predicted to do. And we ended up with a 67.5% precision. Now, there's a lot you could do to extend this if you wanted to. So the first and best way to extend it is we only have two seasons worth of data here. You could go and scrape a lot more data. You could get 10 or 20 seasons and use that to actually make predictions. That will improve accuracy. Another thing you could do is use more of the columns to actually generate predictions. So if we look at matches.columns, there's a lot of columns we didn't use too much here. So things like venue, attendance, you can't really look at because you only know that after the game is over. But you can look at things like who the referee was, who the captain was, other data points like that. You could try a different machine learning algorithm. We used a random forest. You could try a neural network or any other algorithm that can pick up nonlinear tendencies. And you could also integrate some additional data from what we scraped. So we, we isolated only Premier League matches, but you could also look at, hey, did a team compete outside of the Premier League? And, and how did they do there? Or does it indicate that maybe they were tired for the match? You could also look at current team's record for the whole season and opponent record as well, and how the opponent was doing in the last few games. So there's a lot you could do to extend this and really improve the precision. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project walkthrough. Thanks.